Hey guys, Daniel Mason Jones here coming to you live from the Premier Orlando Hair Show. Today has been so filled with energy and excitement from all the thousands and thousands of beauty professionals that are here. I've been in classrooms teaching myself to death, giving all sorts of social media tips and information on how to grow uh, beauty professionals to take you to the next level. So in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to be giving you some great tidbits, but what I want you to do for me is to get really engaged in this feed. So it's really important for me and Salon Centric that if you like what I'm talking about, make sure to type yes in the comments below. One of the biggest things that I'll talk about during this Facebook Live is engagement. A lot of people are always caught up on followers and how many fans that you have. It's really no longer about the amount of followers that you have, it's more so about the engagement. Not only is it about the engagement, now we're finding that when you're commenting below, we actually need you to have more than four words. So if you're commenting on your friends or having your friends support you, make sure that you at least have four words in the comments below. So to be able to get that engagement, what I want you to do is to make sure you're asking a question. So before I get started in this in-depth live through Facebook, I'm Daniel Mason Jones and I've been a hairstylist now for 17 years. I'm an artist with L'Oreal Professionnel and I'm also an ambassador for Salon Centric. So it's really an amazing life that I get to live, educating, meeting tons of you guys. I'm sure there's a lot of my friends watching right now. And uh, I, love it. I love all the support that you guys always give. So thank you so much for that. I'm also here with my friend Ryan. He's behind camera. He's going to be asking some of the questions that may come off this feed so that I can give you direct information right now. Hopefully you're all relaxing on this beautiful Sunday at home if you're not here with us at the Premier Orlando Hair Show. And the information that I'm going to be giving you, I hope it will help take you to the next level in your careers as a professional. So, for me, one of the biggest tips that I would give you in social media is to make sure that your lighting is perfect. You know, I think a lot of us, when we first started out with social media, were really engaged and all about the ring light. The ring light is still great, but for me in the salon, I started working with a lot of photographers, and I found that the ring light casts a lot of shadows. So I reached out, found a couple of couple of different resources of information and I fell in love with the makeup light. I, I prospect, I put this out to everybody, it's available at themakeuplight.com. I most recently ordered one of my resources that I use is out of New York City. It's a photography studio and I brought in a light, it's called Draycast. That's amazing because it allows you to get the warm and the cool hue. I know we're all doing a lot of cool toned hair right now and having the cooler lights is great because it doesn't conflict with the work that we just did but we still have those guests that want to see those warm buttery hues in their hair. So to have a cool light against that can kind of contradict the work that we just did and not give you true tone. So I, I brought in the Draycast light. It has warm and cool settings and you can also go lighter, lighter or more dim. So lighting is key. Anytime that you can get near a window to get the natural light, that's also a key element. I think it gives a true read to the tone of the work that we've created. If, if you have questions throughout this feed, please make sure to comment below because I'm going to go back in this feed later on and answer as many questions that I can. So the next thing that I'm going to tell you is when you're posting on Instagram or Facebook, make sure that you're really monitoring what's working for you. For me, I know on my particular page, people love before and afters. I try not to overload my page with before and afters just because I don't want to bore the audience, but when I do post it, I see the highest engagement happening off that. When I'm posting before and after photos or videos, what I like to share is the process. I may put it in the comments because during the, the description section, I typically will ask you questions. My reason for always asking questions is because I want you to become engaged with me in the news feed below. Not only is it cool for algorithm and engagement, but it really helps me to connect with you, the artist, the people that I love most. So that's really important. Make sure that you're, you're posting, getting your comments act, activated underneath. When people ask me how to get followers, I think that's probably one of the biggest questions that I get on a daily basis. I just walked out of a class with about 300 professionals with um, the same question, how do I get more followers? Followers, again, really aren't as important as the engagement. But my answer to you would be how to get more followers is really just like making friends. So. If you were making a real life friend out in public, you would have to put yourself in a position to be seen. A lot of people will go to bars, clubs, or restaurants to hang out, maybe even networking events. Now with a digital platform, what you need is hashtags. So you wanna make sure that you're using at least 30 hashtags in the comments below your, your photo or video
because what this is going to do is it's going to give you a broader outreach of people to find what it is that you posted. Also, when you get those, the people in through your hashtags and people comment on your work, make sure to go back and respond to them. If, if we were at a party hanging out and I walked up and shook your hand, which would be a hashtag, and I said, hey, how's it going? I would expect that you would respond to me. There's a lot of times I'll dedicate my Tuesday night to younger artists that are starting out in the industry, and I'll go through and I'll say, hey, for example, did you do color? W was this foils or was it balayage? And most of the time, I never get a response. This is a huge reason why people's pages don't grow. On my page, I try to make sure that I'm always engaged with each person that takes the time dedicated to come through and message me because it means so much to me as an artist and as a human that people will actually write to me. I really honor that and I'll always respond back. That's just like being a great friend, right? So make sure that you're engage engaging on your page. Your page is really a great place to push out your personality. And when you're thinking about all the different platforms that are available, there's Twitter, there's Instagram, there's Pinterest, there's Insta Stories on Instagram, there's Facebook pages, there's personal Facebook pages, there's business Facebook pages. And you're probably thinking, I don't even know where to go. Now I'm sure some of you guys are social media ninjas, but some of you are thinking, I'm not going to do any of it because it's simply overwhelming. Really know who your target market audience is. I would say to you, if your audience of people that you're taking care of in the salon are 15 to 35, that your audience is going to be an Instagram-based business. If your audience is 35 and up, I'm going to say that your audience is probably a Facebook business. So make sure that you know who you're working with. We all know that Pinterest is a platform that's just that's people that are, have disposable incomes. It's a lot of stay-at-home moms, which is also our platform. Twitter, I've not really found a lot of success there. So for me, it's really important on my demographic, my clientele is somewhere between 30 and 65 that I navigate Instagram and Facebook. I try not to populate the same content on both because it can become a bit redundant and a little bit boring. After all, we want to keep our guesting or the people engaged on both pages. This is really, really important that you're not sharing double content and keeping people engaged. I also want you to think about your Facebook page as your personal community. I think a lot of people see Facebook as something else, but Facebook is really the people that maybe you grew up with, you're socially, you were affiliated at different times in your life, maybe you went to high school. These are people that may not do business with you. I would dedicate that over to your Instagram page. So Facebook would be your community. Instagram, I want you to think of your Instagram page as basically all of you that have always wanted to be published in a magazine. This is your opportunity. So this is your own digital platform and magazine. When I first started mine out, I was thinking it was going to be like an up hair forum and it wound up that I wasn't doing up hair that much at all so it, it really became dedicated to cutting and coloring. So that's my magazine that people can go and shop. They can find me. If I were dedicating this page to a blonde demographic, some people specialize in blonding, I would make sure that I have transformations, take people through the journey of the blonding experience, really mention the products that we use and of course here at Salon Centric, we are all about being professional, which by the way, I'm going to take this moment just to give you guys a heads up. I need you as a favor to hashtag it takes a pro. This is how we all link together as a community here in our Salon Centric community. And we know that as professionals, we all need to be united together. So on your pages, make sure that you have your Instagram really fluid where it tells a story. You know that it posts in lines of three. So you could have up to nine images that are people are looking at, maybe 12. On that, what I would say to you is if you're going to have nine images, keep seven of those images based around hair. Maybe you could take one image and give a little bit of a photo of you in the salon or whatever environment it is that you work in. Let people see and connect to who you are behind scenes. I think so often as professionals, we're so geared and showing people our after picture and we're so, we're so chaotic about making sure that the hair is laying flat. Our people on our page already know that we do great hair, but they fell in love with us for a reason. Let people connect with you on this page so they can see who you are. They want to celebrate your wins and your successes. I found that to be true on my page more recently. I had a, uh, an opportunity in Atlanta. I was heading home from Tampa. I was filming with Salon Centric, and I was on the airplane and received an email. On this email, it read something like this. Welcome to the Influencers Club. We would like to invite you in. If you're interested, we would like to deliver a car to your salon. And I was like, is this real? So I knew that I had a large engaged audience based off of Instagram with clients and other hair professionals. 
But now this page has reached out even beyond that. I had a $130,000 sports car delivered to my salon and all I had to pay for it with was hashtags. This is really powerful because the companies now see, they know that us hairdressers and beauty professionals are influencers in the community. and They know that we have a large outreach of people. So this particular community reached out, gave me the car, the car wound up selling, which is exactly what they wanted. Next up is a Hublot watch. So never underestimate the power that we have in our social media feeds. And also, just a tidbit of personal advice, keep it positive. Our world is filled with so many things that take away from our daily life and our happiness. Make sure that your page delivers happiness to people. If I were looking to buy you as a customer, a potential customer, and I saw that your page wasn't necessarily a happy place to be, you might lose that sale. So make sure that you're really pushing yourself out as a happy person if that's who you are. There's so many things that are running through my head right now that I could share with you on social media. You can certainly follow me, Daniel Mason Jones, on Instagram and ask me questions. One of my favorite things to do is to connect with you in my inbox. And you can always ask questions under, underneath any of the videos or static photos that I have on there as well. Studies are showing right now that in 2019, which is simply six months away, that 83% of engagement that's going to be coming through social media is going to be video content. A lot of us are scared to death to do lives, to do Insta stories, or even just to do a regular video and post it to our page. Don't be scared of that. If I can let down my walls and be authentic with you right now, I'll tell you that I have five or six insecurities that automatically come through my head every time I sit in front of a camera. I'm not good enough. Someone's going to judge me. I don't like my appearance. And I'm from the South. Maybe someone will make fun of my Southern accent. But at the end of the day, this is who we are. And we are, we are ourselves. We're unique in that special power. So let people fall in love with you for who you are. The people that are on your page already do like you. They're all about you. So put yourself out there. Get over the insecurities and the fear. We all know that when we step on the other side of fear, victory is always there and we'll win. So hopefully these tidbits of information are working. I need you guys to do it one favor. If you're liking what you're hearing right now, tag three of your teammates or other professionals that are in our industry. Make sure they're in this feed so that they can see what's happening. I want nothing more than to see our industry grow. After all, that's why I got into education. So I'm going to take a couple of questions right now from Ryan and see what you guys have to say. What's your approach to Instagram stories? Instagram stories, that's a great question. So my approach to Instagram stories, I have actually been not so great at them this weekend because it's been busy. That is not an excuse. Um, I need probably to have someone with me walking around videoing some of the things that are happening. Instagram stories are 15 second videos that you can put, put up. You can do photos, you can do boomerangs. If you're shy to talk on camera, do boomerangs and let people see maybe some of the energy that's happening. You should at least be doing five to seven stories a day. People wanna see behind the scenes. I know myself, I'm a sucker when it comes to seeing how a restaurant works behind scenes or maybe like a large company because I have a business brain that's always, always in gear. So let people know what's happening behind the scenes. We had a day in the salon we have a pretty large salon in Atlanta, it's Muse Salon and Spa, and our color orders come in every Tuesday, and our salon-centric, you know, we see boxes everywhere. And that particular day, I, I just took and videoed around the salon, there were 20 plus hairdressers putting the color up, and uh, it was amazing to see, number one, the energy of our team, it was great to see how beautiful everyone was, I was proud to showcase that. And I tagged Salon Centric, and I tagged L'Oreal Pro US, and I tagged Pravana because that was the boxes that I was unloading. And it was funny to get the comments inside my box. The clients were saying, wow, it takes that much color to make us beautiful. And uh, then a lot of the salons were like, wow, you guys order a lot of color. So people really wanted to see what we were doing there. So keep your stories fun, keep them engaged. This is a great place to showcase your personality because we've all got one. What's the process for managing a busy salon but also coaching your busy clients? So managing a busy salon is hard. We have 59 employees where I am. There's always chaos. There's things going on. Clients, are, I feel like we have photo shoots in every corner of the building. It's so important. You know, we, it's easy to say that we don't have time to get a photo or a video, but really now, if you don't get that, somebody else is going to get your client. And I know that sounds so crazy, uh, but I want you to think about this. As a professional, when I was, we were having a team meeting, and I said to my own team, I was like, look, if clients are coming in and they're bringing photos of other artists' work, 
they're already looking to replace us because we didn't have that information available for them on our platform. So it's really important that you take that time, dedicate five minutes into the, into the cut or color and let people see it. Grab a teammate that you work with, have them come in and video or, or whatever it is that you need to capture that footage, even buy a tripod. I, get a, I have a little tripod that's tiny. You can order them online, put your phone in it, it, char it goes in the charge port and do a time-lapse video of you cutting or coloring hair. Just let people see what you're doing. Tips on growing an audience and engagement would just be nice. Um, again, you know, if people are coming to your page, they're coming there for a reason. They came there because they saw something you posted, it was beautiful, or they came there, there based on recommendation, or somebody tagged them. So make sure that you're, you're giving them something. I just told a story in my last class I was teaching. I was like, so let's just all visualize for a moment because we hairdressers, we love to eat. So let's just visualize that I'm hosting a dinner party at my house and I have 12 seats at the table. All day long we were preparing food, the house smells wonderful, it's decorated beautifully, and all this food is ready to be eaten. I, as the dinner host, meaning the host of my Instagram page, decide at the very last minute, I've already got the people that are here following us at my house, right? The people that are on your page are the same people at your dinner table. I'm so excited about my work or my dinner that I run out on the street and I start screaming, hey, I'm having a dinner party, come on over. We're neglecting a lot of times the people that are already on our pages and not paying attention to the people that built us from where we started in the beginning. We're always trying to get more people to where we are. So really engage. The biggest key that I could tell you is become somebody's favorite. The secret to success in sales, in business, in entrepreneurship, in anything in life is outlining a problem, offering a solution, and giving a testimonial. Ask yourself when you post, is your post about you or is it solving a problem for another person? So when someone comes to my page, the biggest thing I get back all the time is you're inspiring. Um, how do you balance all that you balance? So, and then I'll give color formulas. So I'm solving other hairdressers' problems. Hairdressers that may not have a large clientele wonder how I have such a large clientele. So I'm sharing that information on my page through my Instagram. So it's, it's a place where I can resolve problems for people. I know a lot of you are beautiful, but when you're posting selfies all the time, you're not solving anyone's problem. And so if your question is why you're not getting more followers or engagement, you have to understand that you're posting for yourself, not to solve problems. Just kind of reevaluate what we're posting. I'm sure you're all amazing. But if we keep posting photos of ourselves over and over and over, you're not going to get engagement, and it will actually bore your audience. Tamara wants to know, what do you use for photo shoots? What equipment? Pro camera? Great question. So what do I use for photo shoots? I'm a huge fan of my iPhone 10. I love the camera. I do not love portrait mode. I'm absolutely anti the portrait mode, even though it gives a beautiful finish. If I just did a really nice, cool blonde, I take a photo, it automatically turns my work yellow. I do not like that at all. It works for certain tones inside the salon. I use a Canon camera, and I also have a Nikon, if we get into that, and I download it onto my phone, and then I can post from there. I find that most times I'm too busy behind the salon. You guys have to understand there are days I see up to 40 guests a day, so it's really busy and hard for me to manage the salon have all those clients in the salon and do this. So it's easy for me just to go straight from my phone, upload, and go. I don't save my hashtags in my notes folder. Um, I might use them as a resource if I need a reminder of some of the hashtags that I should be using. A lot of you copy and paste and use the same hashtags over and over and over. It's considered spam or Instagram or even Google will think that it's a robot. We can't do that. So. I do have probably 200 hashtags that I look at in my, my phone where I will pull from inspiration, whether it's bridal, color, vivid colors, whatever it is. Um, yeah, so hopefully that helps. I do use professional lighting in the salon. I like, like to use artificial lighting in combination with natural light because I think that gives a beautiful finish. And do you have anything else to add? Um, as far as like equipment that I use? Yeah. Not that I can think of. I have so much stuff in my salon. I feel like my salon looks like a photography studio because I'm constantly buying new things. I do have a rule of thumb. I believe that if you make 100000 a year behind the chair, that you need to invest 10% of that money back into your professional tools. 
So if you make 100,000, you should have $10,000 worth of shears, blow dryers, combs, clips, lighting, whatever it is. You need to give yourself back because that money invested is money well invested. It's going to help the return become even bigger. And of course, if you really know me, you should give the other 10% of that money away to a local charity. I'm watching you guys. <laughs> So I like you. Um, I think we should connect on social media here. So my favorite hashtags would be um, it takes a pro, obviously, because I'm a salon centric junkie. Um, I like to brand my salon. I work at Muse Salon and Spa in Atlanta, Georgia. So I do a lot of at tags, Muse Salon and Spa and hashtag Muse Salon and Spa. I'll let people know where you are. And I say all the time in my classes, I'll ask, uh, it's like a game that I play with my group. I'll say I want you right now to simply think about three name brands. I want you to think about the name brand of a tennis shoe. I want you to think of a name brand of a laundry detergent and the name brand of a toothpaste. And unanimously, right now, the majority of you are thinking Nike, Colgate, and Tide. And of course, I know you millennials are thinking Crest, right? That's because of how it was branded. And I'm not psychic. It's just the power of influence in, in branding and what we do. So if, if you're using three or four hashtags over and over and over, it almost becomes like a subliminal message. So Daniel Mason Jones is my hashtag. I use that a lot. I, the town that I live in, I do live in Atlanta, but I'm in a suburb. So I use those hashtags. But the hashtags that I use, I want to make sure that I'm gearing them to the audience that I need. A lot of hairdressers are hashtagging industry hashtags. That's great, but we have to realize if you're trying to build a clientele with industry hashtags, hairdressers, we, we already do our own hair probably, and we're not looking for a hairdresser. So you want to make sure the hashtags are directed toward people in your community to get them in. So for me, you know, my clients, I know what they wear, the brands they wear, those would be hashtags that I would use if I was trying to build a clientele. Hopefully that helps. And I like all your questions. Do we have any more questions? Um, if you guys like what we're talking about, please, please, you know what, go in the comments and give me hashtag it takes a pro and show salon, uh, salon centric some love. I am so grateful for this platform. They, salon centric really is a great powerhouse behind scenes to connect us as a community. And I love following our it takes a pro hashtag because I get to see so many of my artists that, that I work with, with the different brands. We have so many beautiful brands in our portfolio and I get to see your work. And even here at the show, it's been so funny. I walked out on the show floor a while ago, and I must have literally taken 60 pictures with people. They're like, oh, my God, you're Daniel Mason Jones. I follow you on Instagram. So you know, the power of Instagram is unbelievable. And, you know, it almost gives us a sense of building community with people that we've never maybe met, but also know with that power, never take it for granted and keep it kind, keep it positive, because this is our brand here within our, in our company. As far as social media, I can't tell you guys enough how much you should be using it. I dedicate two hours a day, one hour before I get out of bed and one hour at night after I go to bed to respond. And though that may sound like a lot of time, the return on investment is absolutely and crazy. It's crazy, not only from the monetary gain, but the connections of people that I will forever have as friends just through social media. So I think social media, we need to look at it in a different way. It's not about us. It's not about becoming famous. It's about the power of what we can do through the connections that we're making through other people. And I, I think that that's a really big misconception that people, we always want to be famous. And the famous thing might be a little bit overrated. I think when you start changing people's lives and helping people, Zig Ziglar was an amazing man. And one of his quotes was, you can have anything in the world that you want to have if you help enough people get what they need. And so I think we're all given a beautiful platform whether it be behind the chair or on social media, to love, to serve, and to give back. If you guys know me at all, that's my whole entire message about life, is to love, serve, and give back. So social media has allowed us a lot of opportunity with that also. I hope you guys have enjoyed this Facebook Live. I certainly love being here with all of you. I'm so excited to go back in. I'm doing a branding class. If you're here at the Premier Orlando show, I'm doing a branding class today in room 312C. And Branding is so important. I think a lot of us have clients that maybe aren't the right client for us and we see them come in, we get nervous. It's because we've branded ourselves the wrong way. I say it all the time. Remember guys, people will buy you if you sell you. So make sure everything that you're doing, do it with an intention. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Take care everyone.